Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for our feature movie review, disc number nine in the 88 films Italian collection. This is Zombie Flesh Eaters 2, a.k.a. Zombie 3. That's right, that's right, Zombie 3. Now, there may be casual listeners out there. There may be people that have not quite come across this phenomenon yet, but the numbering of certain movies specifically coming out of Italy can be quite hilarious in that when Zombie Flesh Eaters came out, Zombie Flesh Eaters was marketed in Italy as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead which was known as Zombie over in Italy so that technically became Zombie 2 so this becomes Zombie 3. That is, there, you know, it is a sequel in number only and nowhere even remotely connected by story, out with there are zombies in both movies. Uh, there is nothing that connects them through. There is no real through line either. Um, except, you know, Filchi directed 
zombie flesh eaters and kind of directed this movie. We're going to get into a bit more detail, uh, but first, as always, we like to do a bit of the blurb uh, from the 88 Films website about this release. It says, The late, great Lucio Fulci, with a little uncredited help from zombie creeping flesh helmer Bruno Mattai, returned to his living dead roots with Zombie 3, the long-awaited sequel to Zombie Flesh Eaters, aka Zombie 2. However, just as Zombie 2 was inspired by Dawn of the Dead, with Zombie 3, Filchi spins his own terrific tale on another Hollywood hit, The Return of the Living Dead. The end result is a fast-paced, plasma-packed popcorn romp in which the contagious fumes consequent with a invasion of flesh-feasting ghouls. A classic carnage-ridden splatter caper in its own right, Zombie 3 is right for reappraisal and a rise in Blu-ray and worldwide HD debut that looks finger licking fabulous. For Fulci fans, it's a no-brainer. This gory, gut-tearing gem is an essential addition to your collection. Um, the, the release itself comes with a, a smattering of um, extra content. Uh, kind of, they beefed this one up quite a bit, which I, I you know, thoroughly enjoy. Uh, what we have here is we have an interview with star Otto... Ottavanio, I can't say Italian names, Delacqua, um, a live Q&A with Catrona McCall from such great movies as The Beyond, um, City of the Living Dead, um, etc, etc, a kind of Fulci collaborator. Um, that interview was from 2014 and is chaired by Callum Waddle, who we spoke about in the previous episode. Uh, it also has Zombie Reflections, an interview with Beatrice Ring, an interview with Claudio Fragrasso, um, the original Italian Opens, the original Italian End Titles, uh, and a trailer reel. It's, um, where to begin with this one? So this is a first time watch for me, ladies and gents. I had never come across this one before. And I kind of... I love Lucio Fulci. I'm the first one to always put my hand up and say one of the best of the Italian genre directors overall in that when you watch a Fulci movie you just know you're about to see something incredibly over the top. Like, narrative be damned. This thing's going to swing for the fences. It's going to throw everything against the wall. See what sticks. It's going to give you absolutely everything including the kitchen sink. That's a Fulci experience. That's a Fulci movie. And... Zombie Flesh Eaters 2, I mean, I, I'd been, like, raving about how much I was looking forward to Cat in the Brain, which is release number 39, I think, in the collection, because it's just fucking bonkers, an absolute bonkers movie. And I was like, yeah, that's Fulci, maybe it is most bonkers. And then I watched Zombie Flesh Eaters 2, aka Zombie 3. And I was like, yeah, this is right up there with it. Um, what a fucking riot this movie is, by the way. Absolute riot. Um, as the, the blurb states, um, when you sit down and watch Zombie Flesh Eaters, it's clear where the influence comes from. It is a kind of almost Italian rip-off of um, Dawn of the Dead. Filchi's involvement with that project kind of has, you know, it's stated in history now. It's out there for people that want to do a bit of search around it on the web. It's a very fascinating story. In the case of this one, Filchi certainly is the director of this one, but this project apparently existed for a couple of years before it finally made its way into the format that it's in. And it's now more widely known that that's mostly due to the work of Bruno Mattai. Um, Fulci did not have the greatest time making this movie. In fact, various different, um, what we say, squabbles on set had led up to this ultimate decision that Fulci was going to try and kind of fuck over the, the studio by, by making his movie uh, a bit tawdry in parts. And as a result, the the movie was then kind of shelved and given to Bruno Mattai to finish and Mattai shot quite a lot of different stuff I think a lot of the Mattai stuff if you're watching it is kind of notable I think you will see where it looks like someone else has directed this movie uh, Fulci for, for all his 
you know, negative aspects flung against him by history in terms of, you know, how he opts for, for shock and gore over necessarily uh, substance and value. I would say that even if you are in that camp, it's difficult to disagree that Filchi's visual eye was incredible. I mean, you can just tell when Filchi is directing a movie. It, you know, there's, there's an aesthetic to it. There is this um, visual aspect and quality about it that just, it sings on the screen is the only way I can describe it. it it's like... It's like poetry to the eyes. And Matai certainly is not like that. If you've seen um, the zombie creeping flesh, which is also in the Italian collection, we will eventually get to that movie. you see what I mean about that. There's something a bit more sci-fi, um, kind of sci-fi made-for-TV movie, about a lot of the stuff that Matai does. And it's kind of segued in here as well. Yes, it definitely shades kind of like parallels to Return of the Living Dead. But I would also say on some level there is specific iconography in terms of the kind of hazmat suits that the, the military end up wearing. Which are, you know, in the wheelhouse of something like The Crazies by Romero from the kind of early 70s. So you've got... You've got another nod, I think, back to the, the world of Romero and, and the world of what he's done in terms of uh, contagions, etc. So, what is Zombie Flesh Eaters 2 all about? It was worth saying that the plot for this movie is absolutely fucking ridiculous um, in the most wonderful way. The most wonderful way. You just don't get movies like this anymore. Which kind of upsets me, kind of hurts my heart. So yeah, so we have this testing facility in the Philippines, a kind of military biological weapon testing facility where they create this, what will be used as a biological weapon, but it goes wrong. It has these side effects which were unexpected um, in that they not only kill people, but they reanimate the cor uh, corpses and bring them back from the dead. Everything seems to be going okay and according to plan until the facility itself is raided by a rival mil military gang and during the escape uh, of the scientists carrying the, the biological weapon out, uh, unfortunately gets spilled over and infects the local bird population. So then you have these winged animals carrying this disease themselves out into the populace. Inevitably, there is some sort of cover-up, so the people with hazmat suits arrive, uh, fully armed, think once again, think the crazies, uh, and kill an entire hotel full of guests to try and cover up, put out some sort of uh, false flag operation story to, to cover up the works that have been happening at this experimental military camp. The reason the virus ends up being spread, though, is because during the cover-up, they burn a body, uh, which makes the pathogen airborne because that's how science works ladies and gentlemen I don't know if you know that but that is how science works of course um, people in the the local towns uh, start to get infected themselves birds are now carrying the contagion we get this fantastic over-the-top fucking bunker scene where a bird on the ground a, a bird corpse comes back to life and then starts repeatedly pecking someone in the most comical fashion on the side of the head, thus transferring the disease to him as well. So now we have people infected with this zombie pathogen. Inevitably we will get some sort of characters we can latch onto, so we have these uh, off-duty soldiers uh, who are hanging out with some of the local teen hotties uh, for, a, for a bit of fun, fun sansy and frolics. Um, out and about in the local jungle area but they themselves are captured within the quarantine zone. The plot obviously carries on with this massive cover up with the military trying to basically execute everyone that is potentially uh, contaminated and then widen it out to if we just murder the entire town then no one will ever know the difference and we can flag it off as some horrible accident. However, they have not considered one thing. That one thing that they did not consider here is that whilst you're getting all that funky, atmospheric, creepy, gore-drenched Lucio Filci stuff, this movie was eventually handed over to Bruno Mattai, which means you get some what can only be described as over-the-top Rambo, fucking mad as balls, tits hanging out, fucking action. We have explosions, we have buildings being, it feels like the napalm has been dropped on them. Some of the action scenes are friggin' so over the top. 
we just have like a shell of it's like that scene from Hot Shots where the guy's shooting the, the machine gun and then eventually it turns into him and he's waist deep in shells. That's kind of like what this movie goes into when the action kicks off. The action totally kicks off. So we have our um, our, our military off duty personnel fighting back with a, an arsenal of of me weapons of small and mass destruction, uh, try to wipe out the zombies and, you know, ultimately overturn this kind of military cover-up exercise. And that's kind of the plot of the movie, so to speak. It sounds almost a little bit generic on some level, but this would be doing a disservice to the bonkers of this movie. Uh, one of the reasons why this to me is like one of these found gems that I will watch and watch and watch now that I've seen it. Uh, you can probably tell from the way my voice is sounding kind of giddy and slightly higher pitched. I fucking love this movie. It was so much fun. We have some incredible scenes of gore. There is a scene where a guy's legs are in the water and he's getting attacked by a zombie and when he gets pulled at like piranhas they've munched his fucking legs off at the knees. And it's such a powerful visual scene. It's so silly. But played straight. This movie's played entirely straight. No campness, no tweeness in here at all. It's all played for shock value. Um, and the, the, the kind of... The, the way that you come to expect from from the, the, this combination of, of directors as well. Um, I mean, it's worth saying as well, at this point, that whilst the, the bulk of the, the work was done by Fulci himself and Bruno Mattai cleared up quite a bit, there are also um, hints here of... Claudio Fragrasso as well, who helped out on this project. Um, he also apparently did a little spot of directing work as well. Um, Claudio Fragrasso obviously famously involved with the kind of the, 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 the troll series of movies. Um, so you, you you know what you're getting there with that guy. So you have this weird triple threat almost <laughs> a combination of directors. And you're getting like the the absurdity of like a like of like the troll movies, you're getting the over the top genre exploitation action of Bruno Mattai and then you're getting the atmosphere of Lucio Fulci and it doesn't quite come together in a way where you know you have this wholly remarkable movie but what you have is the epitome of what an 80s genre movie kind of is you know when people think about the extravagance the self-indulgence the over-the-topness um of 80s horror cinema it's movies like this that they're on about where you'd sit there and on paper you can't quite map out how a movie like this exists you know how 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 in today in 2018 can i pick up a fucking blu-ray and sit down and watch this movie I had an absolute ball with this. Even the zombies are not quite the zombies that we know. They still retain a bit of a bit of themselves. There is a scene where a zombie who has died, well, a person who has died clearly wielding a machete, comes back wielding said machete. So basically walks around trying to slice his victim up with a fucking machete. I can't think of any other movie I've ever seen that's done that. Um, and as a result, I was sitting there just in glee, absolute joy, watching what was happening on the screen. Also pleased with some of the expectations that we have from other zombie movies and kind of inverts them as well. So in the past, you know, the, the great Romero kind of zombie rule book is that when you decapitate a zombie or you kill the brain, that's the, the zombie dead. There is a scene where they open a fridge and there's a severed zombie head which then self-propels, levitates itself off the ground and flies towards someone's neck. Uh, and a scene which made me choke on my beverage of choice last night um, to the point that it almost came out my nose. Of course, all this attention that we're giving it just now on the, you know, the kind of visual um, haunting kind of atmosphere of Filchi being spliced together with the over-the-top action of Matai, we are not maybe necessarily given enough credit to the fucking behatching score here by Stefano Meninetti, um, who kind of manages to capture some of the Fabio Fritzi atmosphere from the early Filchi zombie outings like the beyond set the living dead etc and managed to inject them with this kind of 80s 
pop synth. Um, the soundtrack for this is absolutely amazing. Then when it just kicks it over every scene, it just makes me smile. It just adds to a, a viewing experience which just comes across as pure joy. If you are a fan of exploitation movies, if you are a fan of over-the-top action, gore, zombies, scripts that are, are wooden and nonsensical, thanks for that for Grasso who did the script for this and some of the dialogue is troll too worthy. That's right. Whew, kind of rotten. Um, the whole thing comes together in just the most wonderful way. This is a movie that no way could I sit there and tell you is, you know, a, a highlight of cinema. I can't say that this movie will, will you know, will enrich your life by being able to quote it in its lexicon but what I can say is that very few movies really just swing for the fences very few movies are as just batshitly entertaining as Zombie Flesh Eaters 2 I am so happy that I own this I am so so happy that I own this movie I can't wait to watch it again this is the Everest of grab your friends, sit down, eat popcorn, drink beers and laugh yourself into oblivion exploitation movies I have seen in a long, long, long time. I had a total blast for this one and hopefully you guys did too if you watched it before this and if you've not and you're listening to this episode, go and find it man, honestly you are going to have a whale of a time. This is entertainment from start to finish. And by the end of it, I still challenge you to really tell me kind of what's going on in the movie, because it's not really clear. It's it's a ton of fun. In terms of reviews and grades for this one, we use the old Netflix scale. One hated it, two didn't like it, three liked it, four really liked it, and five loved it. There is no way I can give this anything less than a 4.5. It's between I really liked and loved it. Once again, that's not because it's like a high watermark of, of cinematic prowess, it really isn't. But in sheer entertainment value, you're gonna find very few movies that just tick all those boxes of what the fuck am I watching right now than um, Zombie 3, AKA Zombie Flesh Eaters 2.